Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a full step-by-step -step guide together today, just showing you how to replace the timing belt on this 1.8 petrol 2012 Vauxhall Zafira. Now this engine's the A18 XCR, and you can use this same guide for replacing the timing belt on the same engine in various other models. Um, just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. We'll show you, we'll just show you the kit that we're using. We've got full new gates, timing belt kit. Comes with a new belt, some new bolts in there, there's crank, main crank pulley bolt there. We've got tensioner and an idler. Now we have got some timing tool bits for it. You can do this without the, without the kit, um, but there are some cheap sort of versions of the cam pulley holders, which are probably worth getting if you're gonna attempt it yourself if you haven't done many. Um, but yeah, if you check the, the links in the description below, I'll put links to all the tools, all the parts used, all the torque settings, and where you can get them all from as well. Now obviously, we're using a two-poster ramp. It does make the job a little bit easier, uh, but to be honest, they're not too bad at all to do on the floor. All I'd do, if I was doing it on the floor, is just jack it up quite high on the driver's side front sill there. Just put a wheel underneath it. You're just going to want the driver's wheel off, just to give you a bit of access to the sort of lower cam belt crank pulley side, that saucer. Um, but the first thing we're going to do, just going to get this air box out of the way. It's quite straightforward. We've just basically got a, got a little connector on the air mass, air flow meter there. We're going to undo that take the wiring loom out of the way. The actual air box is just held in with some little rubber bungs. And we've got a little pipe there, we're probably gonna just pull out. I think that'll just pull out with the air box. And then we're just gonna need a Jubilee clip tool or a flat blade screwdriver, just take that pipe off there and just get that out of the way. So um, just to start with, we'll get the air box out of the way, then run you through everything a step at a time. As I said, it's really straightforward to get the airbox out. It's just simply held on with some rubber bungs there, just one there, another one at the back there. So really easy to just get out. And the little pipe did actually just pull it out the front of the airbox there and just took it to the side. So now that the airbox is out of the way, the next thing I'm gonna do is just undo two screws. Got one in there, another one in there. Um, and then we're gonna to need to put it up in there and get the wheel off and just run you through a few other bits. Um, obviously once, we get to a certain point we're going to need to take in the engine mount off here and once we get to that stage we're going to need to support the sump with a jack but we'll run you through that in a minute and um, just to get your two bolts off on your your top cover there you're going to need an e-torque socket i think it's pretty sure it's size e11 so i'll just run through that now So that's the top cover off, and it is held with an e, size E11 torque screw. As so we can now see the cam belt, two cams on the top there. And um, the reason we're replacing this one, we don't know the history of it. It's done 100,000 now, so um, it's ready for replacement if it hasn't had one. I'm just looking at it from what I can see so far. It does look like it is the original belt. To try focus but you can see it is a gm belt so pretty sure that'll be the original belt on it um, we're just going to just jack it up slightly now just get the driver's front wheel off then run you through the next step after that So now that we've got the wheel out of the way, next thing we're going to need to do is just remove this front arch liner. Now you can sort of do it where you just undo it a bit and just fold it out of the way, but to be honest, the arch liner is split up the top here. It's really easy to get them out, and then you've just got full access to the crank pulley there. So I always like to take them fully out. Uh, but we've just got a couple of rivets. If you just pop the centre in there, you'll be able to get that out. Same up the top there, sort of a clip at the bottom here. You can pop the centre back, and then you'll be able to pull it out. And then just on the side here, we've got some Torx headed screws. So we've just undo all them now get the ice liner out of the way and then we'll go on to the next step probably just going to get a few comments on this this uh, this vehicle's actually been stored for quite a long time it's got a lot of other work that needs doing on it as well obviously tonight we're just concentrating on the cam belt so 
You can see, looking at the brake just there, it's looking in a bit of a sorry state. I'm just going to want a T20 Torx driver for the screws though. So now we've got the arch liner out of the way, the next thing I'm going to do is just take the auxiliary belt off. Now this is the tensioner for the auxiliary belt, and all we need to do to get that off, we've just got a 19mm multi-spline socket. You can put your socket straight over there, and you just need to turn that, if you just pull that downwards position, and just think as you do it, the belt will go slack, and while it's slack, you can obviously pull the belt off. So we'll just do that and get the belt off now. So that's the alternator belt out of the way. Now obviously, if you, while you're doing a cam belt, if you've got the belt off, it's an ideal time to replace the auxiliary belt. Um, this one doesn't actually look too bad. The way to check it is if you just turn it inside out, pinch it up. If it's quite badly worn, you'll see like a load of little cracks appear in the ribs there. But so this one's not too bad, so we're just going to be reusing that tonight. Right, so now we've got the belt off, I'm just going to get do a few more steps while I've got it up in the air. Um, just as it's a little bit easier um, as once we've done this I'm going to be needing to drop it down and then we'll put the jack underneath it I'm going to need to put the jack underneath the sump so I'll just use like a block of wood on the jack so it's not um, directly on the metal that's all um, but yeah as it's just a bit easier and right in front of me I'm going to take the crank pulley off now, now there's a couple of ways to do it I'm using a, a decent impact driver so I can just buzz it straight off but if you haven't got an impact driver probably the best way to do it is to put it in like fourth gear put your foot on the brake or get someone to put the foot on the brake as hard as they can while you crack it off with a bar so um, in the timing kit or you can get various different tools as well to lock the flywheel at the same time you can do it that method if you want to, to undo it so I'm just going to use an impact driver Pause this pulley off now, and then we'll just run you through a few more bits before we drop it back down. And for the crank pulley there, you're going to want an E18 E-Torx. Just one thing to take note of, your crank pulley does have a little noggin out of it, and that does need to line up with the noggin on the main crank pulley there as well. At this stage now I'm just going to put the bolt back in, just wind it in gently. We're going to need the bolt in so that we can turn it over. You can put the washer on it but if you do you'll need to make note of that little line there. We're going to be using that later on when we come to time it up that's all. So the timing position when it's properly into place should line up at the bottom there. But we'll run you through that when we get to it. And just gently wind the bolt back in now. I'm just going to undo a few of the few more of these e-torx bolts just so we can get the cover off. And then another one for the tensioner there, just to undo that centre one so you can get the tensioner out of the way as well. Now these, the, these lower casing bolts are E11 e-torxes again. And if you haven't actually got e-torxes, there are a few sockets that will fit. A 10mm will actually undo them quite nicely as well. Obviously we've got the proper sockets. So we're going to use them. For the tensioner, it's an E14. Just with the tensioner out of the way, you can see we've got a couple more little e-torx bolts there again as well for the casing <laughs> these battery ratchets becoming quite a common thing now really handy bit of kit i've put links to these as well in the description um use a snap on one and been using a milwaukee one as well
Okay, so at this stage now, we can see pretty much most of the timing belt. Obviously the main thing in the way at the minute is the engine mounting, so we're gonna to need to get that off next. Now, I'm not gonna do it about putting it into the timing position, um, but once we get down, we'll set the jack on the engine, we'll then set it up correctly. And we'll basically you get two, two full turns of the crank to one of the cam. So we could you could set this right on your timing mark, which is that line there with that line there. If you do put that, turn that round, you should always, when you turn an engine over as well, you should always turn it the end, the direction that the engine would normally turn. So you turn it clockwise. Um, but if you put that, turn that around and put that in that position there, you could find that your camshafts are 180 degrees out. If that was the case, you'd have to do one more full lap and then you find that your cams will be in line. But we'll run you through all the timing marks once we've got it back down. I'm just going to drop it back down now and just put the sump, uh, put the jack underneath the sump there, just with the pad. And we'll just jack it up lightly. Right, so just got the jack underneath the sump there. Just see, uh, just gives it a bit of cushioning. And all I'm going to do is just give it a really light pumping. Don't want to go too hard. Just take, I'm just wanting to. All I'm looking to do is just take the weight off the mount here, so that when we undo these bolts, the engine doesn't just drop all of a sudden. So, uh, but now that we've took the weight there, we're just going to undo these three bolts there. Take these bolts off around this bracket to get that out of the way, and then after that, the bolts that go horizontally into the engine block, we're going to need to get them out as well. So. We'll just get all them off now and run you on to the next step. And just want a 15 mil socket for the engine mount bolts. Once your mount's off, the little middle cover just simply clips in. This little clip either side, that's all. Right, so we've now got full access to all the belt and we're ready to just set it into the timing position. I'm just going to use ratchet with a nice long extension on it, the E18 socket, just so that we can reach out. I'm just going to use the crank pulley to turn the engine over. I'm just going to line that mark up with that little arrow on the bottom there to start with. Yeah, so just simply spun that round, just line that line up, bang in, bang in line with that arrow there. So that's the timing mark for the crank pulley. And your two cam pulleys, basically you've got a dot on this one and a little dot on this one. Now officially, the one on the left should sit very slightly higher than the one on the right. Now if you haven't got a locking tool for the cams, basically you can just paint mark them. So if you just put a little paint mark on the pulley there, a paint mark on the casing or you can put it on the back, wherever you can see it nice and clearly so that you know where it lines up. But the timing tools are pretty cheap for them. If you haven't done one or if you haven't done many, it's probably worth just getting one of the kits. If you do just paint mark them, and the cam just happens to move slightly. It's not too bad, but you, it can be a little bit awkward to put the new belt on. You'll find you have to put a torque socket in and just sort of adjust it slightly. And just you might have to just hold it while you're putting the belt on. That's all. But we're going to use the timing, the, the cam locking tool, just to lock them nice and solid. So I'll just show you the two tools now, and I'll just slide them into place. And just before putting them in, I'll just show you on the procedure how it just shows you that the one on the left just sits slightly higher, the line, line across there just slightly higher on the left than it is on the right. So we'll just slide them two, pull, two uh, tools in there. Now, 
nice. You've just seen there, we've got the two cam locking tools in there. Basically, the one on the left just hooks in first because it goes behind that little lip there, and then you just slide the one in on the right. At well, this stage now, the two cams are in position, locked nice and solid, so we don't have to worry about them at all. The crankshaft's lined up. So the next thing we're ready to do at this stage now is just get the belt off, get the tensioner off, get the idler off, then run you for, run you for a refit in the new belt and uh, the torque settings for the tensioner and the idler as well. And the tensioners on these cam belts, really straightforward. You haven't got anything to line up or anything. They're just simply a spring-loaded tensioner. And all you're going to need a little Allen key. It's just six mil. You can just put that in the Allen key slot and you can just basically turn that in the clockwise position there. Now I'll just take the, take the load off the belt. While you're holding it, you can just slip the belt off. So we get the belt off now and get the two wheels off there as well. That's the cam belt. It is a GM belt. Um, it's hard to say whether it's original or not, but it does look it does look like it's been on quite a while. Again, when checking them, you can sort of peel them inside out and just squeeze them up a bit. Doesn't look too bad, but it's always a little bit hard to, to gauge it with a cam belt. Certainly don't want to be risking it. So To get the two pulley wheels off, you're just going to want a Torx 45 socket. just see with the idler wheel some signs of wear the grease is actually starting to come out of the bear in there as well so again another reason it's good job of replacing the belt and a full kit rather than just the uh, just the belt now a little thing to note with the tensioner there's a tiny little lug just on the back there and that lug actually locates into a little hole just below the bolt there as well so I'll show you just below the bolt hole there you can just see this little slot there is where that little pin just sits into to so that it's got something to spring against that's all so we'll do next just get get the new tensioner and idler they come with two new bolts i'll just run you through the torque settings for them we'll get them fitted and then we'll get the cam belt on right so we're going to fit the idler pulley first it does recommend using new bolts which come in the kit now we're using a digital torque wrench don't need to use a digital torque wrench they are quite a nice bit of kit though um but basically the the proper torque setting is done in three stages stage one is to do it to 20 newton meters stage two is to do 120 degrees and then stage three is to do another 15 degrees after that Obviously with a digital one, we can do newton meters and angle. If you haven't got a digital one, you'll have to just use an angle gauge for the angle setting, that's all. If you haven't got a torque wrench, it is a reasonable nip. We don't want to be silly tight, but it's always nice if you can torque it up properly.
that's the idler torqued up now they're ready to fit the tensioner and the tensioner is exactly the same setting obviously new bolt again as well so just run through that on that and just make sure that you definitely line your pin up correctly Well, so at this stage now, everything's talked up correctly. We're now ready to fit the timing belt. Now, sometimes timing belts have arrows on. If they do, you should fit them so that the arrows face the direction the engine's turning over. If they haven't got arrows on, it's always good practice to fit them so that the writing is reading the direction that it's turning over. So if I was to fit this now, it's going to go in that position there, facing that way. So I'm just going to loop it round now. Just need to make sure we keep it nice and taut around the right-hand side. Obviously, that's where the... Uh, idler is and we'll leave the slack for the left hand side where the tensioner is so the idea of the tensioner is to take the slack up so we're going to make sure sometimes it's easier just to sort of feed just a little bit of the cam belt on try and keep it on most of the way around and then you can push it on once you've got it all looped around but you need to keep it really taut on this right hand side across the two cams and up and around the tensioner there so we'll just get that loop round now and obviously there is a like a locking tool to hold the tensioner back but it's not too bad to do at all without you can just I'll just leave the allen key there as i come to just pushing it over the tensioner i'm just going to just tweak it around take the tension off just so i can loop the belt around it that's also i'll just feed it on now and just before you refit your belt it's always worth a quick double check just make sure that your crank pulley timing mark is lined up as well well, you are putting the belt on if you do pull it it is sometimes quite easy if you haven't got a locking tool on the crankshaft to just move it slightly you've just got to keep an eye on it as you do it just make sure it doesn't pull it out at all So that's the cam belt all on. Now they are quite a tight, awkward belt to do on your own. With two of you, it's not so bad, um, but I was just doing that on my own tonight. The best way I found to do it like that is just put the Allen key in, just turn it around and just sit this bolt just through there, just to rest the Allen key so you can keep the tension on. The, the worst thing that makes it quite tricky is because of this big lip on the cam pulley on this side, it don't give you a lot of slack on the belt, that's all, so you've got it on. So. I just have to keep the tension off and I could just work it around, making sure you can see around this side here, it's nice and taut on the belt. And obviously the slacky side is on this bit at the minute. And then once, well now that that's all on, you can just simply remove the bolt and just take the, take the Allen key out. And it's just simply a spring-loaded tensioner. So you don't need to do anything with it. That'll just simply put its own spring on the belt. So, But once you've got your belt on, obviously you would normally just double check if you haven't got your light, your, um, guides in there you just take your paint marks are right sometimes it's worth just putting a little paint mark on there as well just for a quick guide i will just put a simple paint mark on just so that when i turn the engine over in a minute just to double check it all lines up right again um, but then just check as well that your crank pulley line is marked up is lined up as well you just see that's bang on there so at this stage now all i'm going to do is just take the take the guides out i'm just simply going to do two full rotations of the crankshaft and just make sure that everything lines up back in place.
And you can see on your tool, it does actually have a little gauge with the little lines in the middle there. It just lines up with the little holes there. So, so that one's just sat just slightly above it, that's all. So yeah, just do two full rotations now. It's always worth doing that just to double check. The timing's absolutely bang on. Uh, so we've just done two full rotations and just see so just double check with your marks they're both lined up with the mark there the crankshaft is lined up bang on so, so it's always worth just doing that and just double check so everything's bang on and if you do two full rotations and doesn't lock up you know that there's definitely no valve contact there as well so so that's the main part of the cam belt change done. I just thought I'd put the video together in case anyone wanted to have a go at theirs. Obviously I'm going to continue the video. I'll speed through it a little bit as I'm putting everything back together. But I'm just going to put it back together exactly as I took it apart. If there is any torque settings for the engine mountings or anything like that, I'll list them as we go along and then just run you through any little bits as we're just rebuilding it. So we'll just crack on now and start getting it back together. So I've just done the crank pulley up with an impact driver. There is a proper torque setting, which I'll just li list over the video in a minute. Um, but with a decent impact driver, just a nice good buzz with it. I'm fairly confident with the buzz gun, so I normally just do it with that rather than talking it up. It's just to talk it up, you do need to lock the flywheel. I'll we'll get someone in the car with a foot on the brake and in gear to do it. Uh, so that's the auxiliary belt on now and just take note of the route in there just sometimes it can get a bit confusing if you didn't take note of how it went before you took it off uh, but once you've got your belt on always just have a good look round and make sure your belt's round all the ribs all nicely and not just riding off just if you're not careful and it's slightly off when you start it up and it starts running your belt might ride off and damage your belt that's all uh, we've done pretty much most of the work from down below. I'm not going to put the arch liner trim on just yet. I always like, with the cam belt, I always like to just run them up first, just have a quick look and make sure everything's running nice and true from down here while well, I can see it, that's all. Right, so that's everything back together now, just as it was. The only thing I haven't done is just put the wheel on and the arch line around this side. But at this stage now, I'm ready to strike it up. 
once you strike it up just have a quick listen just make sure everything sounds okay just be ready to turn off if it uh, sounds like there's a bit of an issue but as soon as you've got it running just have a quick look at your alternator belt just make sure that's running nice and true so just strike it up and check it quick Right, so we can just see there, just struck up nicely, just as a quick check of the alternator belt, it's all running nice and true. So that's the cam belt change all done. Hope you liked the video, if you did just give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm just going to leave it recording just while I finish off, just put the wheel on, put the arch liner back on. And that's the, uh, the job finished for the night. Well, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.